Guys, today we're going to take a look at another retro handheld sent to me by the lovely folk over at Mech DIY. This time we're looking at the Trim UI Smart Pro Retro Handheld Game Console. And I think the biggest thing that stood out to me about this one is the price. $79.99 is relatively inexpensive. I like the look of this thing first off. Taking a look at the specifications here, things are pretty solid. Almost a 5-inch IPS display. It is 720p all winter A133 Plus processor. We'll have to see how that actually performs in real time. 5,000 milliamp hour battery, Type-C charging, LEDs around the joysticks. Honestly, it looks like there's a decent amount here to like again for that $79.99 price point. So with all that said, let's take a look. So this is the Trim UI Smart Pro. And the first thing we need to do is kind of go around the hardware of this device and I will give you my thoughts and impressions. The first thing I wanna say is Look how tiny those little joysticks are. They're actually not too bad in terms of just the overall feel. They don't appear to have a clicking, so there's no L3 or R3. Face buttons are quite small, but not bad. They have a decent feel to them. D-pad is similarly pretty decent. That's really not too bad for something so small. We have a menu button over here, start select. I like the overall look of this thing though, right? Like it's got a nice clean look to it. Their little logo down here, if this will focus. Actually looks kind of cool and it does light up. Trim UI Smart Pro. There's a speaker grill on either side. On the top, we have volume rockers. We have a USB-C host power button. And of course, the shoulder buttons, which I guess we can talk about now as well. They're okay. The bumpers are really not too bad. The shoulder buttons themselves, they're a little bit hard for me to use. They require a little bit more pressure than I feel like they ought to. When you're holding them like this, they just... You, you really got to give it a squeeze to actually actuate those shoulders, which I don't necessarily love. On the bottom side, we have an FN button or a switch, I should say. And this turns on like a power saving mode, which could be useful for some lower end emulation. We have our charging port, microphone, SD card slot, and a 3.5 millimeter jack, as well as whatever this is, which to be honest with you, I don't know if it pops out or exactly <laughs> what that is. Backside is quite clean as well. Again, I really like the appearance of this device. It reminds me sort of of like a PlayStation Vita, if I'm being totally honest, which I actually do have one of uh, handy. It is very similar in terms of size to the PlayStation Vita, so that's probably why I feel like it looks like one. Let's hit that power button, and we'll see what we have in terms of an operating system. Of course, I was actually playing some N64 Mario Kart. We'll go ahead and exit game. Get back to this main menu. This is running sort of their own software, their own operating system, which, you know, it's honestly, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. It's cool when these things run Android, but sometimes, you know, running your own super lightweight OS is not the worst idea. So as you can see here, we have our bar up at the top. We can do favorites, recents. I don't know what this best thing is because when you go into like what they have under best, a lot of it's just a bunch of stuff, just random kind of stuff that like I'm definitely not going to be playing. And then there's a section of just a whole bunch of Pokemon ROMs that were on this device. Then you can go to game and that's going to have organized all of your different emulators and then app, which I believe just goes into USB storage, net play, and then we have our settings section here. One thing I do want to point out to you is that the joysticks have a light around them, which I think looks really quite nice. And you can actually turn up the brightness of that LED like that if you wanna crank it up. So as you can see here, there are quite a few emulators already pre-installed and ready to go on here. And I would imagine pretty much all of these are going to run relatively well. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna throw this thing into USB storage mode and I'm going to move some ROMs around, get rid of some things and add some things to it. Here's a strange thing. I thought this would be the one you'd plug it into to plug it into your computer. It's actually the one that's labeled as DC. It charges it, but that's also the one you're gonna use on your computer. So let's uh, move some ROMs around and get to testing. All right, so I've deleted a bunch of ROMs I'm never gonna play and I've added some that I will. Unfortunately, as you can see, a lot of the systems that have no ROMs, I think they're just permanently there. So that's a little bit on the annoying side, whatever. Let's jump into uh, Famicom and we will play some Super Mario Brothers. 
So I would say that this is working obviously pretty well. The, you know, it's gonna be running this at full speed, obviously, no problem there. Interestingly enough, the lights around the sticks have turned red. So I don't know if that's like coinciding with like anything in particular or like why it chooses to be red sometimes. But at any rate, as you can see here, uh, Nintendo games, original NES games, Famicom, whatever you want to call them, they're going to be absolutely just fine. We also have our little menu button there, which if you press, you're going to get this little pop-up that will allow you to very quickly do a save state, load, and you can even jump into this advanced menu, which is basically just retro arc, and it's going to let you do some additional things in there as well. We're just going to jump back into the game because there's no need to really adjust any of this stuff anyways. Let's go ahead and leave this game, and we'll jump over to the most logical next step, which would be the Super Famicom or the Super Nintendo. And as you can see, it said no games, but then when I went into it, now it says 14 games. We'll do Super Mario Kart for that one. And again, because this is 4x3 on a 16x9 screen, they've added this nice little overlay to sort of make things look a little bit better. And no real big surprise here. Super Nintendo is going to run just fine, probably better than I'm doing it justice with my driving. Uh, but yeah, Super Nintendo should be totally fine. These retro games are going to be awesome on here. The only real detriment to these retro games, shortcut, is the fact that this does have a 16x9 screen. So a lot of them are going to do these little overlays to sort of compensate for the fact that the screen they're on is not the screen aspect ratio that it would have been designed for. But I don't really think that's a problem. I think that this is working really well. And the controls feel very, very good. Honestly, they feel a lot better than that X28 device that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. Let's push things a little bit further outright. Let's jump into some games because we know these retro games are going to work just fine. So let's jump into something like PSP. This is Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. And I believe I actually have a state that I can load here. Let's load in really quickly. And there we go. We are actually running surprisingly well. And if I jump into these settings here, you'll see I'm actually rendering at 2x native resolution with no frame skipping. And I'm running really well. Let's go cruising around. And actually, let's take this opportunity to turn up the volume here because the speakers are actually a lot better than you might think. They're, they're very loud. A little bit of a crackle there. I'm also having some issues where sometimes the stick... See that? Nothing's happening with that stick. Look at that. So that's a problem. Stick all the way over and nothing happening. I also want to point out, maybe this is going to be hard to see, but my volume... My volume rocker is stuck down on one side. It's like leaning. Huh. There we go again. I'm just not, I'm just not able to turn. Can't, can't do anything with that right stick or the left stick rather. What is going on with that? It was working a moment ago and now it's working again. So that's definitely a problem for these sorts of uh, PSP games. Let's try something that's like really going to push this thing. Chains of Olympus, a God of War game. Let's see what we can do. Once again, let's turn up the volume. A little bit of a speaker test. This is just 1x resolution, so we're not pushing things any harder. Let's see if this stick acts up on me. These buttons are reversed. So I need to fix that. It's got X over here. So that means this will be jump. I think that this game natively only ran at 20 FPS. So with that in mind, that's what it's running at. So this is actually running pretty solidly. And so far that stick is not giving me any of the trouble that it was giving me a minute ago. You can see in this scene, it jumped up to 30 FPS. Now we're back down to 20. Let's see if we can push this thing a little bit. Let's go into the game settings. Let's see if we can turn on a two frame skip. And then let's see if we can push the resolution up to 2x. We absolutely cannot do that. <laughs> absolutely cannot. So let's drop this back down to auto, which is just a 1x. And okay, that did not, that did not do what it needed to do. Let's try that again. Let's 
Why? What has happened? Is frame skip? Frame skip is making it worse. So let's try this again. No frame skip. 2x resolution. Hey, we're actually still running pretty okay. So, kind of a bummer here because, you know, the joystick issues I was seeing in Grand Theft Auto, I'm not really getting those issues here. I need to try and replicate that, but this is even 2x on Chains of Olympus. And this is running pretty surprisingly well. Loading up a PlayStation 1 game. This is Jet Moto. Of course, uh, joystick's not going to work. Cause it's probably a pre-joystick game. You can see this is running just fine as well, even though it does look a little bit rough. Starting to show its age just a little bit. But I think most PlayStation 1 games based on this are probably going to run pretty well. 20 FPS is what I'm getting up there in that corner. But again, I believe that's just what this thing ran at. I think that's just kind of where it's trying to hit. Here you're looking at Resident Evil 3. As you can see, it's running perfectly fine. Um, it seems to me like... It seems to me like PlayStation 1 games are going to be totally playable on this thing. Strangely enough, though, more often than not, it's in 64 games that give systems like this uh, the most trouble. So let's back out of this and let's go to that lovely Nintendo 64 and we will fire up a game that I know that is it's going to make this thing struggle and that is Perfect Dark. Well, and unfortunately, it is giving it such a hard time that it's making it crash as is some of my other games. Let's try Mario 64, the ROM that they actually shipped it with. So this one is loaded up fine. They're all in the same .n64 format. We'll test this quickly. You can see I've also stretched this thing to widescreen just to make it more comfortable, make it look a little bit better. And it's running really quite well. A little bit of a stutter there, nothing too bad. Really don't like how hard I've got to push this trigger back here. But otherwise, this is running brilliantly well, and this looks really, really good. No complaints at all. See you later, dog. Yeah, no complaints with Mario 64. I would, I would assume this is going to be as playable as, as anything. Oh God. <laughs> Good stuff. Let me go back here and see if I can figure out why these other games are not working. Let's go to another one of my ROMs. How about Ocarina of Time? And again, these are in the same .n64 format, so I don't know why they wouldn't work. So this one is working. All right, three days later, we are in the actual uh, world here, and we're running around. Everything seems to be going pretty well. This is actually running better than I was expecting it to run. Considering that this is also, if I go into the advanced menu here and I go into the core options, you'll see we're running this at 1280 by 720. This is really not bad, but there is a joystick issue. Once again, if I'm going this, look at that. I'm fully forward and we're just barely walking. If I go to the sides, see guys, that's, Man, that's a problem. Otherwise, this thing is doing so well. There's so much to like about this thing. But that, oh, that's a problem. All right, let's save this really quickly. See if there's any setting that we can go into. Might be able to fix this. Let's go into these settings and let's go maybe key map. No, system, factory reset. No. Oh, under system, there's adjust joystick. So let's try to adjust the left stick. Please rotate a few times according to the maximum range. Okay, press B key to exit. It looks like it's pretty much the same as it was before, but maybe we can test this and maybe things will be better now. And this will also give me a chance to show you once again, the ability to load one of those states. Should put us right back where we were. All right, let's run back here. That, that may have fixed it, but unfortunately it seems like it's an issue that kind of pops up when it feels like it, but it, it's possible 
that fixed it. You also saw some stutters there, but again, I'm running at 720p and I'm widescreen hacked. So like you could definitely make this run better. Performance, it's better than I was expecting. There's one more console though that I do want to check out that you might not think is going to be a good fit for this and it might not be because this is not a touch screen, but let's try the Nintendo DS and we'll just go to Mario Kart because that's one that I think will be the quickest and easiest to kind of get through. Looks like you can use the left stick to sort of move a pin around. So that's interesting, although I don't know how I click with it because I just I just selected Mario and I'm continuing to select Mario. What is the button? So left trigger takes me into the menu. The right trigger is how you actually select with the pin. Okay, that's a decent enough little workaround for games like this. Okay, uh, 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 <laughs> okay. All right, I figured it out and I'll show you what I had to do. It was slightly confusing, but I figured it out. I think my shoulder buttons, I think all this stuff needs to be remapped. It's running really well though, but here's what you gotta do. Configure your controls and there's two rows here and here. The one on the right was all screwed up and was wrong. So I have had to go through and fix them. There's X, there's Y, there's left trigger, there's right trigger, which those are already correct. But that fixed it, let's save for all games and let's return to the game and there we go. Now I'm, now I'm, oh, that's weird. If I'm holding down A to go, I can't, <laughs> why not? Hmm. Okay, not sure what to tell you about this one, guys. There may be some way to fix this. There probably is, but for right now, just another kind of weird control issue. Otherwise, it's running really well. So, all right, what do I think? I like the screen. I think it looks really good, even though it's not a touch screen. The speakers are louder than I expected them to be. The controls overall feel good. Except for these triggers, which feel terrible. They take way too much effort to press them down. The stick was having that weird problem, which may or may not be fixed by what I just did. It doesn't look like I did anything, but it was working temporarily. So definitely keep that in mind. You saw in the DS game some weird control issues there as well. Perhaps that's something that can be fixed as well. But out of the box, Definitely some issues in regard to the controls. Build quality is really, really good. Like it feels solid. Like there's not a lot of like creaking or bending or anything like that. I actually was able to creak the screen there just a little bit, but nothing else. And like I said, it feels quite good. It would go in your pocket very nicely as well. So there is a lot to like here, even if there are a couple of rough edges. And I would expect before too long, we're probably going to start getting custom firmwares for this device as well, like another Trim UI device that has already come out. At least I believe it got some custom firmware stuff, so there may be some options to further improve this thing. As usual, I will drop a link down below to Mech DIY, a link to this product. If you want to purchase it, you can do that down there. A big shout out and thanks to Mech DIY for sending the Trim UI Smart Pro over for me to test. As always, no money changed hands. For the production of this review, they were not given editorial input, nor were they given early copy, and they are seeing this video at the exact same time as you are pre-order now, shipping on November the 10th. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.